I need to have a serious chat with you guys about Abby, our livestock guardian dog. In today's video is sponsored by my friends over at Open Farm. So as most fans of our farm will know, we have two livestock guardian dogs here. We have Toby Dog, who showed up towards the end of 2019 and is a very well-established fixture of our farm. Yes, he is. Yes, and he's adorable too. And then we have Abby Dog, or Lady Abington, if you want to be more formal. She came to our farm back in March as a puppy, and Toby and I have been training her up to be a livestock guardian dog compliment to Toby Dog. And I had a dream of one day breeding Toby and Abby together. I felt like they would make some beautiful puppies who would be wonderful for guarding farms all over the area here. And this breeding dream was something I worked really hard to make come to fruition. You see, because Mr. Toby Dog here has such broad and diverse genetics, it was virtually impossible to find a dog here on the east coast of the United States that wasn't somehow connected to Toby genetically. And so I ended up searching all across the United States and ended up selecting a breeder out in California. And that's where we got Abby. I even ended up having to hire a courier to pick Abby up at the farm in California and drive her across country and bring her to our farm, which believe you me, was not cheap. And so for the past five months, Toby and I have been working to train Abby, teaching her how to be a livestock guardian dog, and really trying to verify to see if she had the necessary behavior and temperament and genetics to be a good breeding partner for Toby Dog. Good morning, honeybees. How are you doing? Getting ready for another day of collecting pollen all around the farm? And as those of you who have followed our YouTube channel and TikTok and other platforms know, the training process with Abby has been, eh, how should I say it? I mean, hey. Abby, hey, no, no, Abby, no, hey, Abby, no, no. A wee bit challenging? It's not that Abby is a bad dog, it's just that she's a bit high energy. Now both Toby Dog and Abby are from a breed of dog known as the Maremma. The Maremma is a very old livestock guardian dog breed originally from Italy. They look very similar to a Great Pyrenees, but they're actually rather different from a Great Pyrenees. And one of the main reasons that I selected the Maremma in the very first place is because they can be so wonderful with poultry. You know, if you look at the spectrum of livestock guardian dogs that are out there, you have some dogs that are bigger and stronger and tougher fighters. But then you can have other dogs like the Maremma that's much more relaxed and can work really independently and is good for the temperament of poultry, but also at the same time can scare away the bobcats and the coyotes and all of the things that we typically have here around the farm. You know, for the most part on our farm, I don't need dogs that are built to fight the coyotes. I just need them to be willing to bark and scare them away and show those coyotes that this 10 acres of fenced in area that I have as my ducking goose habitat is not something that the coyote should be hanging around. And when I look at Toby Dog, he has been a shining example of the type of livestock guardian dog behavior I want to see. You know, he'll go into full Cujo mode when danger's around. But when he's around my birds, he's very sweet and gentle and caring. And I never have to worry about the risk of him attacking a bird. But when it comes to Abby Dog, that hasn't quite been the case. You see, Abby has a lot of puppy in her. She likes to chase the birds. She likes to play with the birds. We had a situation earlier this spring when she actually killed Blanche, one of our birds. For some completely unknown reason, she has a vendetta against white chickens, like our white leghorn Dottie. And look, when you have a puppy, the puppy being playful with the birds is kind of normal. Even Toby Dog, when he was a young pup, he had to be taught right from wrong in terms of not chasing and playing with the ducks and other birds on our farm. The problem is when I look at Toby's personality, which required me to correct him like two or three times when he was four or five months old, versus Abby's personality, which has required a correction nearly every single day for the last five months. That tells me that in terms of natural instincts, Toby has much better natural instincts than Abby does. And believe me guys, I look at the comment sections of our videos all the time, and I see the folks who are out there telling me that I just don't know my butt from my elbow when it comes to training, and if we had a real dog trainer here, Abby would be much better. And to a certain extent, that could be true. You know, Toby Dog was the first livestock guardian dog I trained. Abby is now the second. I have a couple of people who have been mentioned and coaching me on training Abby, but I'm still doing everything myself, and I know I'm imperfect. But that said, when 
when I think about what I've seen from a behavior standpoint from Abby, it has me seriously questioning if she's cut out to be a livestock guardian dog. Hey, Toby Dog, it's time for your breakfast, buddy. That's right, it's time for me to feed Toby Dog his breakfast this morning from our sponsor, Open Farm. Open Farm is Toby Dog and Abby Dog's absolute favorite brand of dog food. And they love Open Farm because of the great taste, but I love Open Farm because of the outstanding ingredients. Open Farm is pet food with integrity. All of their foods have human grade ingredients. That means the best grass fed beef, that means well raised pork, and it means things like turkey bone broth made from humanely raised turkeys that aren't using antibiotics. Today for his breakfast, Toby Dog is actually getting a mixture of Open Farm's pork recipe dog kibble, and I use the bone broth as a way to spice things up and make it super, super appealing. You know, Open Farm has been a sponsor of ours for a while now, and I absolutely love the ethics of the company as well as the product that they produce. And it always, always, always wins the seal of approval with the guard dogs in terms of their taste test. If you wanna try out Open Farm with your pets today, check out the link down in the description. And you can use the offer code GOLDSHAW and you'll get 15% off your first order. Would you look at Toby Dog gobble that down? He just absolutely loves it. So whereas Toby Dog had these perfect livestock guardian dog instincts, Abby's instincts were less than perfect. And because of Abby's temperament, it had me wondering, should I actually breed Abby? Yes, I'd purchase her for breeding purposes, and yeah, I still had to wait some time to do the necessary health screenings to see if she'd be okay to breed. But my dream of breeding puppies on our farm wasn't because I just want to make money from breeding puppies. It's all rooted in this belief that a good livestock guardian dog can help small farms and homesteads protect their poultry without having to resort to more destructive means for managing predators. So Abby's temperament had me rather concerned about the idea of actually trying to breed her. But I'm willing to admit in this video that that wasn't the only concern I had about breeding her. You see, when I was looking for breeders that could find a dog who could be a good potential match for Toby, I did find this breeder out in California. You see, when I was selecting Abby specifically as our puppy, the breeder had flagged one issue in that she had specifically had uh, an umbilical hernia. And to me, that didn't sound too distressing or too problematic. You know, you can get a tiny little surgery and fix it, no big issues, it's not a huge problem. And the breeder had mentioned sort of offhand that it could be potentially genetic. But when I had a phone call with the breeder talking about my decision about choosing Abby, who she felt like had the perfect temperament for my farm, or holding off and waiting for another litter of puppies, she didn't seem too concerned about breeding this dog. And she knew 100% the reason that me, a farmer out in Vermont, was looking to buy a puppy from her, a breeder in California, was because I one day hoped in the future to breed the puppy. But what I've since discovered as I've done more research and learned to become more experienced is, number one, umbilical hernias like the one that Abby had are oftentimes very genetic based. And number two, if you look at Abby's litter specifically, there were multiple dogs that had that umbilical hernia, which when you think about the probability of that, that increases the likelihood significantly that the problem was genetic. And there are a lot of folks out there who would say that an umbilical hernia like the one that Abby had would have been an automatic disqualifier for her for breeding in the first place, which kind of has me shocked that the breeder would actually sell me the dog knowing that, that my hope was to one day breed her knowing that there was this big a red flag. Now I've since had a lot of back and forth with the breeder and just nasty words have gone in both directions and it's just not a good situation. I've also learned that this breeder who initially seemed like a good responsible ethical breeder, if I look at her behavior and sales practice in recent months, it's very alarming to me personally. And in fact, the thing that I didn't see when I did my research on her is specifically if you look at the sheer number of puppies that she's pumped out in the last couple of years, it's an extremely high number of puppies and it has me seriously questioning, is this a farm or a puppy mill? Now that is simply my personal opinion, but I will say knowing what I know now, I would have not purchased the puppy from this breeder for these reasons specifically. But all that said, it's simply water under the bridge. Abby's here on our farm now and I have a decision to make around what am I gonna do with her? Should I be breeding Abby or no? You know, back to that point that I've always made, I wanna be a responsible and ethical breeder. And if I have this dog that has this potential genetic carrier for these hernias, as well as the fact that she just has a less than stellar track record as a dog working with poultry. I mean, it genuinely does have me wondering, what should I be doing with Abby? I mean, I wanna do the right thing. I wanna do the right thing by her. I wanna do the right thing by our farm. And I'm sorry, Kurt Cobain just bumped the camera. What are you doing there, Kurt? 
but I've also been very much struggling with knowing what is that right thing to do. Good morning, chicken, chicken, chickens. Uh oh, what happened here? Somehow, some animal knocked this thing over. I don't know what happened here. Oh. If I had to guess, I bet you one of the calves came over here in the middle of the night and knocked over this feed barrel. It's a good lesson for keeping it inside the fence. Here, I'll just tuck this fence back just a little bit. And I'm sure my chickens will eat that up this morning. By the way, as a complete aside tangent about the chickens, I've been experimenting with different fencing options for them. Actually, yesterday I tried this Gallagher smart fence, which is really cool because you can take the fence out and like put the post in the ground and it carries uh, four strands of wire to try to keep your animals in. People usually use it for sheep. Sometimes they use it for pigs. Sometimes they use it for cattle. I tried it on the chickens and it seemed like it was working good for a little bit because I have the electric wire running across the side it was easy to electrify it and it's really nice because it only takes me about 15 minutes to set up and move everything versus say the 40 minutes it does to do my current chicken pasture moves but the downside is the chickens inevitably escaped and so it's not gonna be a good solution so I'm still working on ways to get my chickens closer to my cattle and move my chickens more frequently so that they can follow the cattle closer and cut down on the flies more aggressively Hey, cows, come on, cows. Hey, cows, come on, cows. But obviously, I'm stalling here. And I know this leads to the question that you guys are all wondering, as well as even the thing that I probably ended up titling this video as, what am I gonna do about Abby? And well, I have come to a decision. Okay, Abby, how are you feeling? You doing okay? It's okay, sweetheart. Okay, Abby dog. Come on, sweetie pie. Come on, take it easy. Down you go. Good girl. You gotta be careful, you gotta take it easy, okay? Don't worry, Pablo, I don't think Abby wants your vole. I think you have much more concern about Ginny stealing it. Come on, sweetie. We're gonna get you situated in your little hospital. Uh-oh, you recognize this guy. Aw, Abby and Toby are reunited. Now, Toby dog, you're gonna have to take it easy on Abby. <laughs> He's very curious about what's going on back there. I know, Toby, I know. It's been quite drastic. Come on, Abby. I just put down some fresh straw for you, so come on in. So now Abby's gonna be on heavy movement restriction for the next 10 to 14 days. I'll let her heal up. I'll occasionally walk her around the farm, but for the most part, she'll be spending her time in her little kennel area. You know, Abby, last time you had surgery, I made you a flashlight and it caused some problems. I'd like to introduce you to our new dog, Flashlight. For the next few days, she's actually on restricted access around the farm, but she's got to wear this cone, which she's been beating the crap out of. There we go. I got one there. Now you don't only just look like a flashlight, you look like a damaged flashlight that's been kicked around for years, but no, you're just a little Abby girl. But actually, I'm gonna try something a little bit different this time around. I got you this red bodysuit, and you're gonna be able to wear this, and this will prevent you from licking your wound. Chris, now I just need to figure out how to get it on her. All right, Abby, I'm gonna need a little patience from you as I get this up and over on you. Leg through this one, other leg through this one. There we go. Good job, sweetie. Just checking to make sure you got good coverage here. And then I just want to make sure you can pee and poop. I think that looks pretty good. What do you think, Abby? I don't know, it's probably better than the flashlight, don't you think? Now I know that the question for a lot of you is gonna be, well, what am I gonna do with Abby? If she's less than an ideal guard dog, and I'm now not gonna breed her, what's her purpose? What's her role here on the farm? And quite frankly, Abby's gonna keep doing the things she's been doing. I'm gonna keep working with Abby. I'm gonna keep training her. And she's gonna ultimately be a good guard dog for the farm. She just takes more work. And she just maybe doesn't have quite the genetics that we were hoping for, for breeding. You know, oftentimes you can have a plan and you're gonna have to change that plan. And if you get disappointed by it or disappointed by the animals or people that that plan's built around, you're gonna keep viewing the world like this is the way it should be or how it's supposed to be. But you know, supposed to be has got nothing to do with it. You gotta accept the situation for what it is and find something that works. And I will tell you right now, there's nothing more adorable than having this 90 pound puppy dog laying on my lap. I love having her here on our farm. She is absolutely a part of our farm. And yes, she can be frustrating. And yes, there's certain things that I was disappointed about with her, but it doesn't mean that we're not gonna keep working with her. And she is 100% 
part of Goldshaw Farm. Now, Abby, seeing as you were such a good girl throughout all your surgery, I think you deserve a good meal. You know, and I think good nutrition is gonna help you heal up nice and quick. Dig in, sweetheart. You earned that bowl of kibble today. <laughs>